Okay, thank you very much uh, for letting me do this presentation. Uh, thanks a lot for all of you to join this session because this is uh, not typically SOOC because it's not about database, it's about infrastructure, about uh, operating systems. Um, and if you have a question, you can of course write directly to the Q&A and I can answer it directly or you can ask your questions at the end, of course. So the agenda, uh, I'm sure I will be done in 30 minutes, so no overtime. Uh, I have a few words about our company, Germasoft, then the state of the older Solaris uh, releases. Uh, the main part will be what's new in Solaris 11.4, which is, as you see, available since several years now. Then uh, about the new features introduced in the last month and about our experiences and challenges with using Solaris 11.4 and upgrading to. So that's the plan. Uh, Jomosoft was founded more than 20 years ago. Uh, we are very specialized in this area of operating system Solaris with Spark servers. Uh, so we do everything on this platform. Uh, software development, we do troubleshooting, we do operations for customers, we do consulting, uh, tuning, whatever is required on these platforms. Uh, so this is our main focus, but we do uh, additional things like Java, uh, security and other stuff. We are long-term Oracle partner, as you see, for these environments. And based on this uh, experience, we implemented a product. The product name is VDCF. Uh, this is a management software for Solaris. It covers the whole uh, life cycle. You can do installations, you can do operations, monitoring, failover, upgrades, patching, security, uh, hardening. You can virtualize with it, uh, whatever you need. And we always enhance it with new features and new functions. Uh, it is in use since many, many years, as you see. Uh, we have uh, more than 20 customers, uh, but we cannot use the, the picture and logos of all the customers because most of them are uh, from the financial industry and they are uh, not open to, to give out the, the logo. We are not allowed to mention the, the customers, but we have a few large ones, as you see, for example, the Swiss government trusts us, Swisscom uses the product and other companies, uh, even the Bundesministerium of Vienna and many, many more. So uh, a few words about myself. I'm uh, in the industry since more than 25 years, uh, more than 20 years in Solaris. Uh, as you see, I've co-founded uh, Jomasoft and I speak at several uh, events uh, online and on-premises. Uh, Oracle uh, gave me the Oracle Ace Director uh, because I'm active in this area and uh, enthusiastic and uh, provide community help on the Oracle communities and on my blogs. Um, so you find me online here everywhere on LinkedIn, on Twitter um, and on my own blog. Uh, and uh, if I don't work, uh, I'm happy to do stuff with my family. I love to travel. I'm happy with a good dinner and a nice wine. I love movies. So that's the social stuff. Now let's go into the technical details. So Solaris 10 and 11.3 are the older versions of Solaris. They are now in extended support. This means uh, if you would like to receive patches, you need to pay more. So it's an additional cost of 20% of your usual maintenance and you receive new patches each quarter. But these are not the full patches you receive with the current 11.4 release. It's only the most important security fixes. And uh, Oracle extended this support uh, over the past year. So the first goal was to stop Solaris 10 in 11, no, in 2015. 
Uh, so six years ago, so many customers did already uh, replace Solaris 10 at that time. And because so many customers are still there, uh, Oracle extended the support again and again. And the current end date is 2024. So at that time, they plan to stop providing patches, but they will still support you if you have uh, support requests and their questions and stuff like that. But no new patches, but who knows? If there are still um, that many customers, maybe it will be extended once again. But it's really about time to migrate to Solaris 11.4 because there you get the newest versions of the software, the newest open source versions and the newest security fixes and the complete security fixes, not only the, the most important ones. So that is an important point. So now uh, Solaris 11.4 available since uh, nearly three years. I have a list here of some major improvements and new features. I have slides afterwards for every of these points. So there is a web dashboard. You have the administration history, several ZFS new features, new features for zones. And uh, I have a few others, uh, smaller enhancements. So the dashboard, I think that's the, the, the biggest improvement in Solaris 11.4. It is a web dashboard. It contains an overview, how your system uh, performs. You have an analytics page for analysis. You can find statistics and events. So uh, how much uh, is the memory usage, the CPU usage, disk networking, you find everything about your, your performance. The, Web dashboard is not alone. There is also a database and a command line, this S store tool where you can uh, grab uh, your data using tools if you need. And uh, there are real time data. So if you open this dashboard, you see the real time uh, what's happening right now. And you can also activate historical data to see what was uh, yesterday, a few weeks before to compare. So this is a sample where you see how it looks like if you log in. So you, you see the CPU utilization, how it, it goes. And if you log in at that point, all the, his, the, all the current data will be displayed. And you can activate the historical data for each individual sheet uh, if you require. But of course, you may, it has some impact, of course, if you have, if you store historical data, lots of data is produced and this has a small impact on the performance of the system. So that's why not everything is enabled by default. But we have enabled uh, network monitoring, disk monitoring on several customers without any, any negative impact. So you can do that, but don't enable everything all the time. That's not a good idea. So here a sample, you can, uh, dive into and find out every little detail. So this is a sample of a disk IO. You can select each individual disk. This is a virtual disk. Only the right operations are displayed and you even see, okay, at which second uh, was the peak and how much was the peak. This was 4,000 IOPS of, of a small virtual machine. And so you fin find really out the, the the average, your peaks, what time happens. So really good uh, for performance analysis. And of course, here a sample of the RAM usage. You see when it goes up and you see uh, which component does use the memory, like is it the user space, like the user processes, or is it ZFS cache or kernel zones, or is it the kernel itself? So you find out who is using the memory. Um, again, same for CPU sample. You see here at that time, the, the virtual machine uh, started some processing that why the CPU usage goes up. Um, and another sample for networking. So the, we have tons of such uh, sheets. Then, and uh, one remark, uh, this year we had performance problems at the customers. And finally, using this dashboard, we found out that the customer had uh, 
regular broadcast storms in these networks. And that was the reason of slow application performance from time to time. And using this dashboard, we found the reason for that. So it's really helpful. Then administration history, uh, you can find out uh, which user executed which commands. Uh, it does not store every command, only the most important ones like such a setpool, setfs commands. You see when someone destroyed a setpool or created one, so only that the major administration changes, not every VI, for example. But also very helpful, it's enabled by default. So you find out uh, what happened on the system or what your administrators do. Then another nice feature is ZFS destroy, because if you destroy a file system, uh, in the past, it takes very long time because uh, it requires to free up all the used blocks. In they could be millions and millions of blocks and these took like 30 minutes or one hour if you have terabytes of file systems. And uh, now uh, it is done in the background, so the, the cleanup. This is a sample if you destroy only 20 gigabyte, but it's uh, easy to, to show what happens. You can destroy the file system in the same second, you can create it again using the same mount point and the same file system name and the blocks are cleaned up in the background. And there is this set pool monitor command where you can see how the destroy works. So in the background, you see how much data is still there and how fast it is destroyed and how long it takes. So it took a few seconds here to destroy this 22 gigabyte and after this destroy is finished, you have all the space again. But if you create a file system and fill it, uh, this is wonderful uh, in the background. Then we have ZFS replication. So the replication is not new. You can send using ZFS data from one system to the other over the network. What's new now is if uh, your network breaks and you have to send it again, you can restart it at the point where it broke. So you don't have to or resend all your terabytes of data. You can just continue where you are and uh, the data is transferred compressed if it's compressed under source. In the past it was uncompressed and transferred and compressed and now that the protocol is improved and it does really uh, compress data over the network. So very efficient uh, without uh, the need to uncompress and compress again. Then uh, Solaris 11.4 finally delivered the possibility to remove disk of a pool. Uh, of course, uh, you need space on the remaining disks because the data needs to be copied to the remaining disks. And the, if this process is done, the disk can be removed. So if you reorganize your pools or if you added a loon to the wrong pool, you can clean it up. And for the zones, there is now a SMF. This is a service facility of Solaris. You have a service now for each zone. This helps uh, to control each zone individually, to have events if a zone does not boot, and you can define dependencies on the zones now. If you boot, you can define your database has to start first, and afterwards your uh, zones with applications can start. So that's also a helpful feature. Then another one with zones is you can now add ZFS data sets online while uh, your zone is running. In the past, you could do everything else. So uh, you can change file systems, you can CPU settings, you can change memory, and now you can add data sets at runtime. And then you have the pool, this data set inside the zone without reboot. So this was the, the last point uh, which was not uh, able to, to change online. So now it's the zone reconfiguration feature is now complete with that. Then a few small things. Lots of software is replaced like the, the packet filter replaces the old IP filter, the Apache 2.4 replaces the Apache 2.2. So for these two elements, uh, it is important to know on Solaris 11.3, you have both versions available. So there you have time to replace your configurations to make sure your application works. 
And if you upgrade Solaris 11.4, uh, the older versions will be removed. But you need really to prepare this new software uh, at the update. This is not done automatically. So you have to analyze which software is in use, then you have to replace, and then you can upgrade. Then uh, Java was removed. We have new NFS versions and a lot of new open source software, new versions of MySQL, Puppet, Perl, Python, you name it. And uh, the Oracle database client is included. So it's very easy to install the client. You can just add the package and you have your, your version. Then uh, OpenSec was removed. This was only available in older Solaris versions. Uh, it's really very, very complicated. And uh, uh, the OpenSec uh, changed that fast. Uh, in, it was not easy to update. That's why this uh, software was removed from Solaris. Um, with 11.4, Oracle make it, made a cut. So there are very old servers. So this T1, the M3000, 4000, these are really servers 15 years old. So it's really time to get rid of it, um, to replace it with new uh, versions. And that's why, or that's uh, one of the reasons why they support 11.3 uh, now even uh, three years longer to make sure the customers have time to replace their hardware and to put 11.4 on the new hardware there. And all these details about the support and the uh, server versions, you have this most luck. Uh, with Solaris 11.4, Oracle changed the model how the updates are delivered. So uh, you don't have to expect any Solaris 11.4, uh, 5, or 6, or 12, or anything. So the goal is to keep 11.4 and deliver new features every month or every few months. So you have uh, a new release every month. The update are named SRU, Support Repository Updates. And every update has a number. So this is the, the of course, the update number 29, 30, 31 every month. So in January, it was a CPU. So you know it from the database. The critical patch update, it includes mostly security fixes. So this is the most secure and safe, stable uh, update every quarter. And we recommend to update to such a CPU on your production system. After the CPU, a larger update is typically deployed using new features, new functions, new updates, uh, where you can try out if this new open source software is compatible with your applications. Then another month later, bug fixes are included to stabilize. And another month later, again, security fixes are added and the CPU patch is released. So you have this cycle all the time. And this is good uh, for Oracle because they can uh, release new features more often, but not in large packages, only small delivery continuously. So this is like other vendors do their operating system updates. So and if you would like to know what's new in these releases, there is a Solaris block where you find out what's new every month, a new block entry. Then there is a most talk where you see what are the changes. And the newest one is uh, this SRU 33, 33, so of the last months. Most of the changes are open source security updates because they change often and they have the most security issues. Uh, I have a few examples what was new in the past months. So with SRU 3, the Spectre fixes were deployed. SRU6 uh, introduced new sheet to this web UI, to this uh, web dashboard. So they enhance this dashboard all the time. So it, this means that besides the CPU memory sheets, you have now a sheet where you can see what your database does. Of course, you have to configure the sheet to allow access to your database, but you have the, the view of your operating system, including the database on one dashboard, very nice. Uh, then they had to add old libraries uh, because application requires them. SRU 12 delivered new flags for the 
a process tool, then new Python version, and that's done all the time. A new Python version is added to the operating system. Uh, it is tested. The operating system itself is updated to this new release and later these uh, new Python versions are made default. Um, yeah, I think I don't dive into the details of every element here, but you see there were bug fixes. They remove from time to time older open source versions. They add support for new hardware, like the new gigabit ethernet, the large disks, new compression utilities, and there was a zone sheet added uh, to the dashboard. And very important, one of the unique feature of Solaris is this ASR, the auto service request. This allows the operating system to open uh, service requests automatically. For example, if a DIM fails in your system, if you allow the communication outside of your company uh, to Oracle support, the service requests are opened automatically for your hardware issues and uh, very, very nice feature. So the, the service request is open before you even uh, recognize yourself what's wrong if the team is wrong or a, a process caught or something like that. Uh, very helpful to close issues and solve issues fast. Ah, then kernel online updates. Maybe you have heard of KSplice of Linux and uh, in Solaris it, that's included also. And it is included till the first release of Solaris 11.4, but Oracle did not release many updates because the kernel has not many, many bugs. That's a good thing, but from time to time they deliver uh, IDRs. So this means uh, small fixes. Uh, it is released as a package. You can install this package and it does automatically update the online kernel. So you see using the splice ADM, uh, which ID, so which IDR, which fix is applied, the fixes which bugs. So you can update your kernel without a reboot. And in case of trouble, you could even reverse and remove this kernel fix uh, to have the old version back again. So also a very nice feature. Then some challenges we had in the past uh, with updating. Uh, some of them are very exotic, but uh, good to know, uh, especially uh, in early days, if you update to 11.4, you have trouble with your application, maybe you go back. And if you fail back, there are a few points to consider because uh, if you're using zones, the new environments are not recognized by the older version. Of course, how could Solaris 11.3 support uh, wooden environments of the future? So the problem there is if you go to 11.4 and back, uh, the older versions or the, the newer versions are not deleted automatically. This must be done manually. But the, the recommendation here is don't go forth and back a lot of time. So go, go ahead and do don't go back. Then with the OpenLDAP updates, uh, it's a completely new version from SonarDAP to OpenLDAP. There are API changes. They have different flags. Uh, if you have scripts, you have to modify your scripts and you have an OpenLDAP server. Uh, the update does not uh, change your data automatically. So you have to prepare, you have to export your OpenLDAP server data. Then you do the upgrade and you import into the new version. That's how the updates work. Then the update for Sun SSH to Open SSH, also different versions, different flags. If you use exotic flags, you have to, to change the flags, but the, typically the update is straightforward. I have a link to the documents for those who have special flags in use. Uh, one point maybe is the newer version, of course, is, is more secure. If you use older, uh, algorithms, they are not enabled by default and they don't work. And in special cases where you need old DSS keys, for example, you can enable these old uh, features just in case. Then a uh, point to consider is uh, the special file system. It's well, TMP. Uh, this file system is copied to a new location if you upgrade. So that's why it's a very good idea to clean it up before you upgrade. 
if you have terabytes or gigabytes of data in this temp, um, it takes very long uh, after the upgrade because lots of files need to be moved. So good idea to clean it up. Then again, the similar issue, if you fail back and you have to retry, not all the files are copied. So that's a little a limitation there uh, because the, the tool remembers which files are copied, but if you fail back and you change the file, it will not be copied again. Uh, but if you fail back and would like to retry, there is a workaround. You have just to destroy this new file system and then all the files will be copied. A uh, little remark on the SLU29, there is a bug there. Uh, the large files are not copied at all. So we recommend don't update to 29. There are newer versions like uh, the CPU SRU32, that's the SRU we recommend where to go to. Then a little thing with upgrades to 11.4 with zones. There is some wired error messages if you don't have installed a certain set term package on your global zone. Uh, um, you have to install the set term package on the global zone, but it's not something uh, Nobody knows about it. It's well documented on the release notes, but lots of customers don't do that. It's recommended to read the release notes, follow the steps there, and then you don't have trouble. Okay, so a few slides left. Then a special bug I ran into was uh, because there was a bug with the dependencies. It could happen uh, on this test server. By mistake, Solaris installed some 11.4 packages on 11.3 servers, which should not happen, but uh, this was on one system at the customers with a large desktop installation. And in this situation, an update to 11.4 fails because the packages are already there and not expected. So there is also a fix required. You need to manually downgrade these packages to the packages which really match to 11.3 and remove the packages which does not even belong to this 11.3. And after that, you don't have troubles with your upgrade. Then uh, one little thing, but this solved a long time. There were a few releases between 11.4 SRU9 till SRU17. There was a memory leak. So there's this stat store demon uh, wasted memory and you had to Restart it from time to time, but if you are on a newer release in 11.4 SRU17, you are safe. So it did hurt so a year ago, so two years ago. Okay, so in summary, why Solaris 11.4? It's a very stable long term enterprise OS, so uh, the APIs do not change. So if you are Applications work, they will work on the new version and the uh, Oracle guarantees uh, it will be supported till 2034 at least. So you never know what happens, but you are saved in the next 13 years if you are on this platform. And we are heavily using the containers or zones because they are there since many, many years. They are secure and very stable. And uh, one of the features uh, we have since uh, even since older releases is a security compliance so you can check your operating system about security holes about services which should not be enabled so it helps you to stay secure and you find your performance and configuration issues with this new Solaris web dashboard uh, another benefit of Solaris is Oracle licensing because if you configure your virtual machines or LDOMs uh, Using the CPU limitations, you only need to pay for the CPUs used. You don't have any troubles with licensing like you have other platforms like VMware. And of course, with our 20 years experience and our product, we support our customers uh, on current releases. We help customers to upgrade, we help to patch. And so what I can say, migrate now. So I think on time, uh, with the presentation, uh, all I've prepared. Uh, I confirm you are on If time. you have any questions. 
Many thanks, many thanks, uh, Marcel. I confirm you are already on time. No, uh, this time also we do not have any question in the question and, uh, and answers. Okay. So, um, no problem. So you can contact me anytime. You can read my blog. You can contact me by email or on Twitter or anywhere. Wonderful. Many thanks for participating. And uh, as I told before, I hope uh, we can meet uh, soon again in some. Yep. Kind of Looking forward to that. Physical events. Yeah. Yep. Thanks a lot, Marcel. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So the next session for the one uh, remaining in this stream is in uh, 15 minutes. Uh, let's check uh, with uh, Martin then perhaps we can start a few minutes before. Uh, okay, so see you later. Many thanks Marcel.